Hello everyone, I am Inverse, and after two months of radio silence, I am finally back at school, and that means I have decent internet and decent time to finally get you guys a few more shoutcasts. I'll hopefully be posting a couple of these every single week. I'm going to start with this tournament game. This is a game between my friend and clanmate, Wu299, playing as the Wehrmacht in the north of Samoa and he will be going up against the American player Malium who I'm going to be calling Malium even though I have no idea how to actually pronounce his name I am very very sorry sir hopefully you don't hate me after watching this but you will be Malium for the duration of this cast because that's what I see when I see your name he'll be playing Americans in the south of Samoa. This is game three of the round of five of the most recent game replays 1v1 tournament. Game one was won by Wu as Americans. Game two won by Malium as Americans. I am assuming Malium had the faction choice and went with Americans in game three. Very, very intelligent choice in my opinion given the map. However, I figure I should probably get the game started, huh? Yeah, no more pausing and staring at cute little Yay! Engineers. Anyways, let's get this game going right now. Samoa. I hate it as What's Americans. I mean, no. Eh, I hate it as Wehrmacht. And I love it as Americans. I'm really, really curious how Wu is planning on playing this game. And right off the bat, we do see something a little interesting from the American player. Sending his first engineer, not building a barracks as is as is pretty typical right there, not building that, instead deciding to go straight for the cap on the field. Probably going to start with three engineers, although I wouldn't be surprised if he started with four. This engineer will give it away, not building the barracks. I'm going to assume it's going to be a four engineer start, probably four engineer barracks. Very, very interesting opening. I, I'm actually curious if either player had done this opening in a previous game. I really wish I had watched the replay, but I didn't, as we do see the fourth engineer being queued up. Probably going to throw down a barracks right after. Going for engineer start and then putting a weapon support center down is still pretty good. You see Marina's Marines do it a lot. He is actually pretty, pretty high in the in the ladder doing that kind of build however it is a little bit risky if you're not perfect with your micro and you don't know the build inside and out not many people know the build like marines does so going for a little bit more of a standard four engineer into barracks not very standard of course but a little bit more common you do see this a lot more especially on this map because it gives you excellent capping power early game you see already getting the vp up here he's going to get this munitions point he's going to be able to connect it with this strap point right here he also still has capping power down here and he's going to be able to cap these points right away just gives you really really excellent map control early on against the Wehrmacht player we do see Wu standard Volks first probably getting a second Volks Wu is partial to the Volks Volks sniper MG start as Wehrmacht I do know he used that start a good deal in this tournament I personally have difficulty making it work on Samoa However, I am very curious to see if and how Wu is able to work it against Melium, who is a very, very solid American player in his own right, showing that in his defeat of Wu's Wehrmacht play in Game 1, or, no, Game 2, rather, of this series. Pioneers, Engineers up in the north. Engineers probably going to win this. They do have the green cover, although they do have less health right now. And they're actually going to be port forced to retreat a little bit. Going to hop into that house. Actually, no, not going to hop into that house. Do a little bit of micro. And the second engineer squad is advancing, so Malium should probably be fine. Probably wants to move the low health engineer squad a little bit back, just so he doesn't have to retreat him. But, however, the extra damage from the second engineer squad does come in in time, and the pioneer is forced to run away. Doesn't even lose a man on this lower health squad. Being smart, having the lower health squad cap further back, the higher health squad push forward a little bit. Always want to do that with any squad you have. Just makes your unit survive a lot longer. Just a generally very smart thing to do. A little bit of a lull in the action right here. So actually, no, never mind. I will pimp myself later. Anyways, Volks moving up. Wu being very aggressive, going for this cutoff. This is never a bad idea. However, got to be careful about this 
base MG. It does have fairly insane range. You do see we wiring off here. It's a common misconception to try to wire off right across this little area, and that is very, very dangerous just because of the range on this MG. As you see, the wire right here almost getting shot at from that that MG emplacement. Meanwhile, Melium using his superior capping to his advantage, decapping this fuel right here, also decapping this munitions point up here. Very good play. Sniper on the field, so we do see Volks Volks Sniper going to be seeing an MG right there. Yep. MG, good job by Wu, cutting off Melium right now. However, this is a very, very vulnerable time in, in this build. You do see Malium actually only with two rifles right now. If he had gone for a standard start, he'd have three rifles right now against Wu's two Volks and Sniper, and three rifles does beat that if he attacks smartly with a Flamer and attacks quickly. Snipers are really only good in prolonged engagements. We do see Wu doing his best, really, really wants to cut off his opponent. Very, very interesting point to make there is that Wu is really, really focusing on denial rather than getting himself resources. This is very, very indicative of going straight for tier two. Usually going to be getting a medic bunker up very, very soon and teching to grenadiers. You don't really need resources. As you see, he has plenty of fuel from the early minutes of the game. Probably gonna retreat fairly quickly as Malium does have the unit advantage at this point right now, thanks to that sniper. MG is on the field, but is only being used to protect the sniper, really. This rifle gonna walk right into the MG. Good little bit of micro by Wu. Probably gonna cloak this very, very soon now that he knows he isn't in trouble. Sending the sniper to... Ouch, that hurts. Pioneer killing the uh, the engineers down there, the flamers. Sniper going to be picking away at the rifle squad flanking around. Probably going to want to, yep, move that sniper around a little bit more. Meanwhile, in Malium's base, we see something being built in the barracks. Would not be surprised if that is bars. Could be another rifle squad, however, given the weird timing of this of this army composition. Meanwhile, in Wu's base, we do have tier two being constructed. Not really much in the way of map control for, for Wu right now. If we open up the tactical map, we see Malian with a dominant lead, has the entire left side, thanks to that early capping advantage. This was a rifle squad, by the way, so I was wrong, it was not bars. Malian does have the entire left-hand side, has been able to cut off this plus 10 fuel for a good portion of the map, has also been able to cut off this fuel point down here and the mun munitions point very very dominant lead for Malium in terms of map control it really comes down to using his tech to his advantage at this point in the game we do see Wu going for that tier 2 tech as expected going for more of a manpower drain strategy more than a take and hold resource gain strategy you don't really need map control for this also makes retreats far less painful because you don't need the map control you just need to kill stuff and it's a lot easier to kill stuff when you don't have to worry about capping stuff too because you can just kill stuff and not cap stuff and killing is oftentimes easier than capping when the other person is trying to cap and you're trying to kill sniper being used to excellent effect forcing a quick retreat on this rifle squad very very smart move meanwhile Wu is trying to cap back a little bit of the middle while Malium does try to cap this fuel point just make it a little bit harder for Wu to recap it for himself we do see the Krieg barracks up in Wu's base and we don't see any tech in Malium's base we don't even see bars I don't think we have grenades grenades would be kind of stupid against the players of Wu's caliber especially going grenades first never a good idea against good players and Wu somehow sensing the the lack of of AT or the lack of tank threat rather vehicle threat going for the early gren it all is is haven't talked for a while on microphone apologies it is important to note that Wu's munitions is hovering right around the 75 mark he actually laid a mine somewhere so he made me look like a liar I'm gonna find that mine I'm gonna find it he's hiding from me or maybe he like got a no he, no he used a med pack that's what he did that's what it is. Was it on the sniper? It was on somebody. I really, really feel stupid right now. Anyways, uh, as I was going to say, apologies for the sniffle. It is important to note that if you are going to have 75 munitions and you are looking bet or you are deciding between building a pack and building a Gren, it's oftentimes a good idea to build a Gren and just get the 
get to Shrek as emergency AT if you do get surprised by a vehicle like an M8 early in the game. Just because an M8 is stalled, like can be stalled by a by a, a, a Shrek squad. It won't usually die unless the American player is bad, but it will be able to stall it out for a or in time for a pack to hit the field. And if you if your opponent ends up not going for the vehicle tech, bingo, you have a gren that can actually be used to do stuff, and not just sit there and wait for a vehicle to come. Is it coming? Wow, that was a huge mine. I don't. I can't tell whose mine that actually was. Everyone kind of died to that one. A Pioneer Squad did go down. Meanwhile, more rifles and another Flamer flanking around. Good little flip of the MG by Wu. Also doing a good job, or was doing a good job, of focus firing down the the Flamer Squad. Really, really good idea to do that. Meanwhile, in, in Malium's base, we do see the observation post on the fuel. Wu does not know that is there. Also the supply yard and no tech from the barracks. This is a pretty good indi indication of fast tier 4. We are going to see see Shermans very very soon. Probably going to want a second pack for Wu and two Grands both with Shreks. Sherman's fairly fairly dangerous in this patch just because one pack doesn't do insane damage to them with its three cloak shots. It's a lot more difficult to counter well micro Shermans especially on this map because it's really easy to just dodge back and forth between buildings and use line of sight blockers to really really make it difficult to counter the Sherman with AT mid game until you really have an overwhelming number of of grands or packs or something like tier 4 or something like that. Meanwhile Wu's base we do see a Volk squad being loaded into a half track kind of interesting might just want to get him to the front faster however not really moving at all so I don't know what's going on there usually you want to put up Pioneer in there because a Pioneer mans the MG and that's always good because that MG actually has surprisingly good suppression, not really a bad idea. Interesting to note that Malium is really doing a good job of pressuring VPs. VPs, something good players really do a lot of is capping VPs but not at the expense of capping resource points. VPs really put pressure on on your opponent. They they force your opponent to react to you. They force your opponent to actually do something and not just sit around because if they do not do anything, VPs will tick down and the game will be lost. Meanwhile, we do see Malium fanning out on the left-hand side. Also has a squad in his base. Looking like he's prepping up for a big flank. Usually want to do this coinciding with some kind of tech. This is a kind of weird time for Malium. He's getting his tank depot up but is also trying to pressure I'd be surprised if he committed to attack to an attack at this point simply because he is investing so much in the tank depot tech and does not want to lose too much manpower because if he loses a lot of manpower it's really going to delay his Sherman usually when an American player is teching like this they don't want to attack and flank in a straight up engagement Something that Vermont players find, or at least newer Vermont players find, really difficult to to gauge is when is my opponent teching and when is he just massing up to try to kill me with infantry. And a really, really good indicator of that is paying attention to how often your opponent attacks and how many units he is sending with those attacks. If your opponent is constantly attacking, losing stuff, retreating, and then coming back out in a few minutes with a fully healed, fully six-man rifle squads, three-man engineer squads, all that fun stuff right off the bat, there's a pretty good chance he is not teching behind that. That is a very, very heavy manpower investment, and you're not really going to see tech behind that unless your opponent is really, really in the lead. We do see quick retreats by Malium. Really, really good job. Does not want to lose too much of that manpower. Did hit a mine up here, which is kind of unfortunate. And is also capping this munitions point back up, which is a very good job. Also going to want to connect this plus 16, since that is a very, very important point. Meanwhile, the rifle... Is he going to die? Is he going to die? The sniper... Oh, the sniper shoots him. Poor rifle, you're dead. Oh, well. That's going to hurt Malium, especially at this point in the game. He's just gotten his tank deep up, probably getting Sherman out right about now. Meanwhile, Wu's AT force, not really that heavy. We do see tier 3 going up, which can be dangerous. 
against Fast Sherman just because the Sherman is so versatile against everything in the Sturm Armory. Less so against everything in the in the whatever Panzer Command, I believe is what Tier 4 is called. I haven't played the game in a long time, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, oh yeah, I'm also using a new mic and a new setup, so let me know if the sound is annoying or anything like that. If you can hear background noise or me sniffing or me being a terrible commentator. Let me know and I'll try to change stuff. I might just go back to my headset for for recording shoutcasts and just use this new mic for broadcasts and stuff like that, streaming. And speaking of streaming, I will be streaming a lot coming up this week, probably every day, a few hours. I have a little bit of time and I really want to kind of get back to where I was before I left for baseball. So look forward to that. Twitch.tv slash inverse TV. Check it out. Follow. You'll be able to, to see when I'm online and when I'm when you can make fun of me and laugh at me for being bad and all that fun stuff. Sherman on the field actually hit the most random mine in the world straight in the middle. Probably going to chill there until all of these, well all of these, meaning these two flame engineers, go to repair. Kind of surprised Melium hasn't gotten himself a minesweeper yet, but in the heat of the moment he probably is low on munitions, although he hasn't really been laying mines either, so I'm not really sure what he's doing with his muni munitions. Munitions, there we go. Meanwhile, Wu has been able to secure the middle of the map, does have 10 munitions income. What the heck just exploded? Hey, another mine, lots of mines. <laughs> and more mines being hit. Excellent mine placement by Wu Mali. I'm really going to want a minesweeper. Hopefully this is going to be a minesweeper soon. That'd be very good. Trio Center is in the base. It was in there a while ago. I'll, however, I did forget to mention it. Uh, this rifle squad's going to run away. It's going to be fine. How many kills do you have? 18 kills on the sniper. Early sniper is very, very devastating if you can keep them alive. Of course, if you can't keep them alive, you probably will lose the game. Which is slightly unfortunate, but not really surprising, given the cost and expense of the sniper. Something being built. Probably another pack. Yep, two packs. Two packs, pretty standard against Shermans, especially fast Shermans these days. This mine will not finish. It's probably going to get one shot, unfortunately. Don't get shot, don't get shot. It's going to use another retreat. Yes, if... <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yay for misses. Artillery coming down on the Krieg Barracks. That's actually probably going to kill the Krieg Barracks before the pack hits, which is very unfortunate. Actually, those two shells, wow, three shells completely missing the Krieg Barracks. And yeah, Mali, I'm not too happy about that. <laughs> they all missed. They did all miss. That is very unfortunate. Uh, look at that. Not even half health, and the pack gets out unscathed. <laughs> Somehow the Vermont Quarters almost died despite not really being targeted at all. Quickly. Uh, cooking that pack, however, Malium should know the pack is there and probably will back out quickly, maybe not. Nah, he's in a good spot, he's blocked. Meanwhile, Wu has taken that opportunity, the distraction, to recap a good portion of the map. This sniper in this church is a little risky considering that Sherman is just gonna, like, walk by, like, whatever, dude. Whatever! Anyways, uh, pack in the base. Uh, what is that? That was a Panzer, Panzer Fest. Wow, I'm rescued. Panzerfaust going off. Decent choice given how the Sherman probably will not be able to escape right now, especially considering the Stug. Stug is about to hit. The Stug is about to come out. Meanwhile, the two packs really doing a good job of defending the base. This is kind of a bad decision for Melium sending him in. Meanwhile, in the middle, big rifle flank. Still no bars. However, the sniper going to want to get out of this building. Get out of the building and run. Come on, sniper. Sniper gonna die. Aw, oh, sniper dies. That's really unfortunate. Wu wasn't really paying attention. Kind of a misstep. Meanwhile, back in the base, he is microing against this Sherman. One Sherman did die. Second Sherman also going down. The two packs paying for themselves brilliantly. Excellent choice by Wu. However, he will get pushed off in the middle, which is slightly unfortunate, but not really the end of the world, given how he has been able to kill, or he was able to kill, rather, two Shermans. Does not have a... A Comcraft center up, however, so no veterancy yet. Usually, by this point in the game, you are going to want a little bit of veterancy. I usually prefer getting vet to a little bit earlier. This MG probably doesn't see the smoke cover, so maybe we'll lose it. Now he's going to notice. <laughs> and a random shell kills the half health stew. That is very unfortunate. I don't think Wu was expecting that. Meanwhile, these Volks going to have to retreat. Very, very good. Another Volk squad up here, pushing away this 
engineer squad down here and Wu is what was that? Was that, oh, I thought that was a sniper. Anyways, Wu in an excellent position, at least in my opinion right now. He might lose this med bunker. Actually probably won't. Probably won't, nope. He is terror as well and is three and a bit CPs away from his King Tiger. So that's going to be very good. You, you usually want some vet before you get your King Tiger up just because the King Tiger is so expensive and lowers your manpower income for such a long time that the vet makes your grands a little bit more survivable and reduces the manpower drain from having them on the field for that one. Gren grenade going in, not really going to do anything, kills a man at the side of to retreat because he's stupid. Pack's moving up as well. And Malium in kind of a tough spot right now. He has map control, but he doesn't have many units. He's lost a lot of manpower in it this latest stage in the game against a Wehrmacht opponent. Manpower is really the most limiting resource. You're going to have this OP producing a ridiculous amount of fuel, fuel that he is definitely not going to use all of. He still doesn't have bars, I don't think. Nope, still doesn't have bars. Probably getting them right now. We do see that green little light flashing right there. Probably going to be getting bars and grenades as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, I'd really like to see Wu get himself some vet. He did, however, get a Puma. Puma right here, so he's going to do a little bit of harass. Just keep the harassing rifles off of the off of his resource points for a little bit. Gonna make it a little bit more difficult for Malium to move about the map. Meanwhile, rifle squad coming in the middle. MG in the church. Not really gonna do anything. However, this rifle squad isn't really doing anything either. And this grand squad is going to throw a grenade and then retreat. Hopefully, he's gonna retreat. He should get out of there just fine bars weren't what was being upgraded which is interesting i don't know if it was stickies i'm assuming it was grenades we'll figure out yep it was definitely grenades. if it was stickies he would have thrown a sticky or at least tried to throw a sticky right there so we can safely assume he had teched two grenades whoa point to my mic Definitely not where I wanted to. Anyways, uh, hmm, what's going on? nothing's really going on. We kind of pulling ahead at this point in the game. Probably wants to repair that med bunker, but that's cool. Bulk squad in the middle, maybe gonna die, but probably won't. No, he's fine. Meanwhile, this Puma zero kill still. However, he is doing a lot of damage. Forced a couple of retreats, so that's good. Base rushing, but this is a very interesting choice, especially considering the M18 Hellcat. Just gonna drive right by it. Hey, dude, what's up? See ya. Actually, might kill this, this flamer. Yeah, he does kill this flamer. Probably gonna want to kill that flamer and then run the heck away. Given how the Hellcat finally realized, wait a minute, you drove right past me. You're not a friend, and he's gonna run away and probably not die. Yes, he stickies. He's absolutely screwed. Uh, yes, no, no stickies. Not throwing stickies. He's getting bars, so he he got bars and probably grenades, but did not get stickies, which is very unfortunate of him. At least I don't think he has stickies. A little bit of vet coming on for the American player Malium. However, it's it's going to be tough at this point in the game. He doesn't really have solid AT. He's going up against two packs and Pumas with ooh. <laughs> that was Wu's mind. That really, really scared me for a second. He's going up against two packs and Pumas with rifles and light uh, tank people units. If he hadn't lost those two Shermans in that kind of haphazard base rush right there, he'd probably be in a far better position. Kind of curious why Wu is just chilling in this base, not really reinforcing anything. Kind of a misstep unless he's saving up for something, although I'm not really sure what he could possibly be saving up for at this point in the game. We do see him reinforcing finally, so it was a little bit of a mistake. Waiting a little bit to get that, or to get those squads reinforced. Always something to work on, trying to reinforce your squads as quickly as possible when you have the money. Mally, I'm probably going to try to push off this uh, Volk squad with this Hellcat. Very, very nice. A little bit of micro right here. Going to prevent the Volk squad from capping, most likely, although it will take a little bit of attention. However, once these... No, that's a minesweeper. They won't do anything. Anyways, it did manage to at least delay the capping of this plus 16 for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, in the middle, not really much going on. VPs swinging back in Wu's favor finally. Down to three men up here. This squad is not going to cap this. Might as well retreat. He's just trying to occupy the Hellcat's time for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, Comcraft Center finally going up in the Vermont player's base. I do think this would have been good a few minutes, at least a few minutes earlier, however. Better late than never, I suppose. Meanwhile, Pack advancing on the left-hand side. Pack also in the middle. 
Puma in the middle, Puma on the left hand side, Hellcat chilling, doing absolutely nothing in the quarter of the map, always good to see. Meanwhile, on the field, we do look at the tactical map, and Malium has lost three of his engineers and probably a rifle. I can't remember if he built three or if he only, or if he built four or only three. However, he is calling in a ranger squad. Rangers, of course, very good against Pumas, however, very expensive, and against mass flamers, which is never a bad idea late game for a, a Wehrmacht player. They're rather terrible. So, we will see how that goes. Nice little bit of Puma micro by Wu. Just dealing as much damage as possible. Really gonna want infantry vet as soon as possible. Probably getting that right now, yeah. We do see vet one right there. Could start instantly vet 2 which would not be a bad idea at this point a very very quick vet 2 like that vet 2 does not take that long to finish and getting it quick kind of gets or kind of sets the or puts the american player off guard something like that i don't know that doesn't even make sense dramatically but whatever meanwhile off map artillery going down as pack gonna kill the gun right there yes good little bit of Good little investment there from Malium, definitely worth it in my opinion. Probably trying to get a Faust off on this Hellcat, however he's going to move too quickly, not going to be able to get in there. Firing up on this Ranger squad, interesting to note how, however that fired up squads do not shoot while they move. That is why Malium stopped to fire on that Volk squad, or yep, that Volk squad. While they're moving, they just move quicker and do not take suppression, they do not shoot. And that, is inc that includes their, their anti-infantry, not just their anti-tank, which is a good little trick. If you, if your opponent fires up a squad, say a ranger, and tries to, to kill your sniper with it, just decloak your sniper and run away. Because if he stops, you can just cloak again, and bam, he won't be in range. And if he doesn't stop, he's just running, and you're running, and it's like he can't shoot you, and you aren't going to shoot him, so it doesn't really matter. And then once the fire up wears off, he is slower, he's about as fast as your sniper while it's cloaked, and you just, you know cloak it up again or run a little further back and take pot shots and that's 45 manpower or something like that every single shot which is definitely worth it meanwhile back in whose base we see a puma and then a neville verfern definitely not a bad idea puma on the field shrek squad finally yay shrek squad we do have a single pack in the middle two shrek squads actually i totally missed that anyways uh i really really want to see vet two before the king tiger he does have a cp and a quarter about cp and a fifth really in order to get that i'd really like to see sorry about that i'd really like to see vet two a little quicker it is in my opinion a almost essential upgrade when you are going for this tier one tier two tier three into king tiger kind of play style which is very very powerful and in my opinion it is one of the most powerful and one of the most difficult to defeat strategies in the entire game meanwhile one rifle squad goes down and a second rifle squad in danger of going down and blaming i like the way you move for the loss which is unfortunate and you know whatever but yeah that's pretty much the game in my opinion not really much four malium left does have a engineer a rifle and a ranger squad as well as this m10 <laughs> this is what you get when you play other strats and ideas and not yours and that is of course in reference to contador who is partial to the four engineer into barracks play does a lot on angleville actually does it really really interesting like kind of kind of style on angleville goes for engineer start and sends the first engineer right to the cutoff house very very difficult to counter i was actually playing some practice games with cement trying to work on a method of countering that and really unless you send your first uh, pioneer right to the house I mean if you send the pioneer you build right to the house it gets there like two seconds after the first engineer will get there which is kind of not really what you want especially because it takes a ridiculous amount of time to dislodge that engineer from that house and while the engineer is in the house you're pretty much denied the entire right side and the right side is kind of the go-to side for Americans when they start south which is where all Americans start in tournaments because they're fixed positions yay and it's actually interesting to note that automatic used to be fixed positions and I'm talking like way back in the 
pre 2.0, so pre opposing forces, opposing fronts, opposing forces. Wow, I am tired. That's what I get for casting at 2 in the morning. Pre opposing fronts. Auto match was, or at some time, pre opposing fronts. I don't remember which patch exactly. Auto match was fixed positions because, rightfully so, there's different balance from different positions. Of course, South Longra, for example, a little bit better than North Longra because of that plus 16 with easier access. Of course, everyone knows about what Sturzdorf was like last patch. North Sturz with like a 45 munitions income versus South Sturz's 20 something with even map control, which is kind of hilarious. Which was, of course, rectified. And these guys are just talking, I'm not really doing anything. And it's kind of unfortunate. Because stuff's not dying anymore, and when stuff dies, stuff is exciting. And Wu is like, eh, hey, whatever, I don't have to build anything. He's getting vet 2, finally. Yay, game over, I should get vet 2 now. Wu. Yeah, Wu actually won this tournament, so go Wu. Wu's awesome. Yay, Wu! Yeah, Wu's good. So yeah, that's about all I have. I don't know. I'm bad at the small talk right now because I haven't cast it in like days, and by days I mean two months. And if you can hear my mouse clicks, I apologize. But yeah, look out for more casts like this, some educational stuff as well on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash inverse gr. Also check out my stream, I'll be streaming daily around, I don't know, noon pacific standard time as well as 6 Pacific Standard Time during weekdays. That, that is at twitch.tv slash inverse TV. Go ahead and follow that, subscribe on YouTube. Both of them help me out a lot. Thank you for watching. Congratulations to Wu. And when this game is over, yay, I am over as well. Thanks for watching. See you guys around.